how stuff. All right. All right. Uh, you know, I mean, he's going to get better. Um, like I said, you know, it's touch and go for Chicago. He's better today than he was yesterday. Uh, and then we'll see how he is tomorrow, and then we'll see how he is Thursday. You know, but he's, his range of motion is increasing. Uh, you know, there's nothing, uh, nothing negative in the x-rays. You know, nothing to worry about. Is it just a pain tolerance thing, or, or are you guys going to be a little bit more, more Well, cautious? it's a pain tolerance, but also, you know, until he gets his range of motion back and his strength back, you know, you know, he feels comfortable with that. So that's something that sometimes goes slowly and then jumps. Uh, sometimes it jumps really early. It all depends. Yeah. I saw Oba running around out here again today. How, how's he coming along? He's coming along well. You know, he's making progress all the time. So we'll we'll up him again on uh, on Thursday, Friday, and uh, we we'll hope to have him, uh, you know, in some portions of team training by uh, next week. Any further development in, in Freiburg's visa situation? Is he going to maybe be available this weekend, or are you guys still waiting on that? Uh, I mean, you know, he's got all the stuff. It's just a matter of him getting his passport and getting over here. So we're just waiting on that. But, you know, to have a guy fly in and say he's going to be ready to play on Saturday is probably not likely. Yeah. Uh, I guess this Friday, I mean, Saturday, uh, what do you know about Chicago? And, and what, do you, what do you think of uh, going to Bridgeport? Chicago. I mean, Chicago's a good team in, in the sense that, you know, they've had a lot of players injured, and naturally for us, they all get healthy. So McGee's healthy now, and Nayarko's healthy. I don't know if Akam's going to be back for them uh, in time. So, you know, whether he comes back, you know, whether Lorenowitz is off his injury. So uh, it depends. But certainly up front, you know, with the addition of McGee and Nayarko, they become a better team. Nayarko was very much involved in the goal that they got last week. And, uh, you know, it's a team that every game they've played in has been very close. I think they lead the league are close to the league lead in ties and uh, so it, it means basically they're in every game it's going to be a dog fight. How refreshing is it to finally have a full week to prepare for your next opponent? It's good it was good to get uh, a training session in a real training session where we were able to work and get some get some fitness work in as well you know so we start building that base again for us um, you know and so having yesterday and now today a good session and then we'll be able to get into our normal routine on Thursday but it, it definitely feels good to train. How valuable is that time given you're having to put in uh, different players? It just means those guys get more time to play together in training, so it helps. Uh, Christian, you touched on it over the weekend after the game, but just sort of playing maybe more of an advanced creative role. How do you think that he adjusted that? I mean, that's sort of a, a big burden for a young player to, to fill that creative role when you have guys like Papa and Dempsey out. Sure. I mean, uh, I thought he did well. You know, we want him to understand that he's a midfielder when he plays in there and uh, and just to do what he sees, you know, and to trust his instincts. You know, I thought he hit a couple of good balls. The ball he played to Thomas, you know, he got another ball where he got inside the box and cut it back and, uh, you know, hit some hit some good passes to help us combine, helped us defend, covered a lot of ground. So, you know, it was good. You know, we don't expect uh, miracles, you know, from him. I mean, he doesn't have the experience of a Dempsey or a Martins in terms of, uh, or Papa in terms of that playmaking ability but you know he's a player with a bright future and just giving somebody that creative control at his age I mean is that is that something that you've done in the past I mean that seems like it, it's a lot a lot of faith to put in a guy like that it's it's not it's not like we go out in the field and say okay this is our designated playmaker everything has to flow through him that's not what we're saying we we got three midfielders in there we had Pineda Alonzo and and uh, Christian and we expected the ball to flow through all three and he was one of the three and uh, you know that's that's in general how we play you know and players have to then recognize opportunities uh, as they present themselves and use those opportunities uh, you know so sometimes you get the ball and yeah you are the playmaker and sometimes you get the ball and you're not the playmaker but the playmaker sometimes can be Dylan Remick you know because he's got the ball in the wing and now he's got to hit a quality cross and he becomes the playmaker if he doesn't hit a quality cross then he becomes a bad crosser of the ball so uh, you know it's a, it's a situation of you know players get put into playmaking situations within the flow of the game based on your position sometimes you're in that position more often than not He's played that role. He's played that role at UW. Uh, you know, it's just a little faster here. But uh, you know, when he's in that role, I expect him to do well. Is Perkins maybe the the rare or maybe the only guy who was kind of harmed by the creation of of S2? It seemed like the reserve keeper got more minutes in the old world. No, no, not really. I mean, it was just uh, you know, depending on the reserve league schedule, uh, a lot of times that was more um, favorable. 
in regards to how it related to the first team schedule. So the games were at um, times that allowed you to maybe say, okay, let's get them a game here. But, you know, we got them the one game we felt we needed, uh, you know, in preparation for the Portland games, got the Portland game. We played a half a game here. So when you look at it over the last uh, month, you know, he's gotten, he's gotten two and a half games. So we need just to continue to build upon that. And obviously if there were other opportunities there, we might have dropped them for some other opportunities. If you, if he'd have... Hurt himself or gotten a red in the second half against DC. Did you have any idea who you were going to throw in goal? Yeah, nah, I didn't think about that yet. You know, <laughs> somebody would have stepped up and volunteered. So, yeah. <laughs> couldn't it would have otherwise been your chance to get Evans in there, but uh, he wasn't around either. No, he wasn't around, so I couldn't put him in there. I know when I used to play, I was that guy, but you know, I'm sure somebody, somebody, somebody has the long arms, making sure we don't pick any very short arms. Did you ever get called on? Did you play keeper? Yeah, I had to play keeper a couple of times at UCLA. Turn out. Yeah. It, it turned out all right, you know. I was, you know, I was probably the first keeper sweeper when I did it. But you know, you sort of, you sort of did it. I, I just didn't want to do the goalkeeping clinic and the goalkeeping training. That wasn't a lot of fun. Uh, what did you think of the U.S.'s performance in the Women's World Cup? Thought it was fantastic. You know, it was a great result for the girls. They played, they played much better as the tournament went on. You know, had their best game in the last game for sure. You know, Carly Lloyd had a had a great World Cup. Uh, you need somebody to really step to the forefront and uh, put the team on their shoulders, and she did that. Uh, so I thought it was great. It was, it was fantastic. They released the ratings for the final, and it drew 25 million, which I think is the most out of any soccer game, men or women's. What do you think of that number, what it says about the growth of the sport? I think it's fantastic, but you know we have to remember America is a big event uh, uh, soccer or, or a big event sports community. You know they tune in to watch the Olympics, they tune in to watch a World Cup, and they tune in to watch the you know U.S. Open Cup in golf, and they tune in to Wimbledon and stuff like that. So now it's a matter of building upon that, and sustaining, and every time you get a big uh, number like that that turns out to watch a game, you hope that uh, that there's some attrition that's obviously going to take place, but that you keep a few more around. And when you keep a few more around, then you're building a more consistent viewership base. And, and uh, you know, the more ga uh, player or the more uh, fans we get uh, to watch games on TV on a regular basis, the better it is for our sport. Coach, speaking of that, so I mean, the U.S. national team starts today in the, uh, in the Gold Cup. Uh, what do you think of the, their chances? And do you think they can build on the women's to get the audience to keep the, the sport growing? Sure. I mean, I think their chances are good. You know, their chances are good because they're, they've won some good games recently. Should be very confident. You know, I think they've won like four in a row or something like that. And, and so they should be able to build up on that confidence. But they're certainly one of the favorites for the Gold Cup. Have you noticed a different uh, energy at all around camp since the win last Friday? Uh, you know, wins always help. You know, so, so getting a win helps uh, in regards to just, uh, uh, you know, just everybody's attitude as they walk out onto the field. But, uh, you know, we now have to take that win. we got to build upon it.